Hello. There's a question I would like to discuss today. That is, how to design a socially sustainable living environment. A sustainable urban environment facilitates the primary needs for all individuals. Based on these needs, how do we create a socially sustainable living environment? And will this lead us to a sustainable metropolitan area? The first need is a healthy living environment. There's a significant relation between the design or non-design of the urban fabric and life expectancy of its inhabitants. City growth puts pressure on the living environment. A city growing beyond control has to deal with the unhealthy living conditions. The cleaning up of slums began in the Western world in the 19th century. Substantially improvements were made due to the development of sewer infrastructure, clean drinking water and the improvement of the air quality. In the current age of climate change, we are facing new health problems caused by heat stress, air pollution or flooding, as you can see here in Calgary, Canada in 2013. These apartment blocks in St. Louis, Missouri, USA, were built in the beginning of the 50s. You can see high-rise buildings, floating public space and better infrastructure. Which are the ingredients of the modernistic movements? Can we call this a healthy living environment? The neighborhood proved not to be livable. The crime rates were extremely high in the beginning of the 70s. The local government already decided to demolish these buildings. This brings us to the next primary need, which is safety. In cities, safety comes in various forms, such as traffic safety, fire safety, crime prevention or security. Safety is secured by regulations and formal control. For example, facilitated by police and fire departments or by water safety measures. Safety can also be facilitated by design interventions. Related to that, the meaning of perceived safety is important to understand. This meaning is nicely expressed in the old saying, a man who fears suffering is already suffering from what he fears. Would you walk to this park in the evening? A safe living environment also facilitates perceived safety. Perceived safety is about seeing and being seen, attractive design, accessibility and legibility. We can conclude that safety in the living environment is related to the social environment. This brings us to the next topic, the primary need of social interaction. Cities are complex social structures. In a sustainable city, inhabitants have the possibility to interact with each other in the variation of social networks. But the living environment should also offer the opportunity to, to escape the social cage. This so-called control over social interaction is a reason for people to move to a city. I will explain this with the privacy model of Altman. Your desired level of social interaction may vary through the day and through your life, as you can see here on the vertical axis. The living environment should always facilitate this. If the achieved level of interaction here on the horizontal axis is lower than the desired level, a person can feel lonely. When it is higher than the desired level, of one can experience a feeling of crowding. What we are looking for is a satisfactory match. The living environment should facilitate control over social interaction for every individual. So there should be quiet places, vibrant places and variety through offering places that may vary throughout the day. As long as the city consists of a variety of types of spaces, it supports control over social interaction. 
A crowded street, such as here in Hong Kong, may be for some a solution against loneliness. However, for others it might prove too much interaction. We call this crowding. Control is a primary need. If control is legible in the built environment, it facilitates perceived safety and social interaction. It can be as simple as in this example. What makes it, however, complex is that various actors have different opinions on how to be in control. Building walls and fences is not always the best solution. Formal control is needed, for instance, in more anonymous places. However, informal control, where the inhabitants are able to decide over their own environment, will result in citizens taking responsibility. In a social sustainable living environment, control is organized transparently, understandable or readable for everyone, both the inhabitants and the visitors. So, what does a socially sustainable living environment look like? It can take many shapes and forms. Inhabitants perceive a safe and healthy environment, they are in control, and they are facilitated on their desired level of social interaction. The forms that facilitate these primary needs are timeless. See the example of social interaction facilitated on a square in the old city of Ghent in Belgium. However, one thing seems to be missing here. Do you have any idea? Green, an essential part of the livable city. There is a positive correlation with the well-being of citizens. Green is said to reduce stress in the neighborhood. City dwellings in a green environment are perceived as more attractive. Green makes a city friendly. This pocket park in the middle of Beijing in China is also a nice example. Green also has a positive relation with other sustainability aspects. It facilitates a better microclimate and reduces heat stress in the city, and it contributes to better air quality. Green plays a role in water storage. It contributes to a child-friendly city and can facilitate physical exercise, as you can see here. It might even be combined with food production. Furthermore, green supports environmental awareness. To wrap up, designing a social sustainable living environment starts from the primary needs for all and carefully build up the urban landscapes. In every step, we need to safeguard an integral approach to, in the end, facilitating all needs. Health, safety, control over one's own life, a social and a natural or green environment. Of course, the relations between these primary needs can be complicated. For example, higher densities, which often lead to opportunities for inhabitants, might come with air pollution, noise, less green and maybe unsafety. Now please question yourself, how can these primary needs, illustrated on neighborhood level, also contribute to social sustainable megacities? It's all about balancing and finding advanced metropolitan solutions.